So it is now the 26th of February 2025 and for those people who have watched my videos previously you will know that my heat pump came online on the 24th of February 2024. So we've now got an entire year's worth of performance of my heat pump to examine. What we're going to be looking at is how much electricity has been consumed and how much heat has been produced as a result of running that heat pump. We're then going to compare it with other means of heating and then we're also going to be seeing how my overall electricity bills for my entire house, including driving my car, have fared over the course of that entire year. Now, if you haven't watched my previous videos, my name is Anthony and I own a nine kilowatt solar panel array. I've got many videos discussing the performance attributes of the solar panels and also driving my electric car and also looking at very particular instances where my heat pump has been uh, faring in very cold weather conditions. Okay so let's have a look at this number here. 2,425 kilowatt hours that's the amount of electricity consumed over the course of a year and one day. And if we have a look here 8,213, that is the energy produced over the course of the same year. So putting this number into my spreadsheet along with the electricity input and then taking the standard variable tariff with Octopus Energy right now, you can see our overall cost would be £613 if we don't consider anything else. You can see here there is no standing charge. Why is that? Because you're already paying a standing charge for your electricity. So all I'm considering is the standing charge over and above the base scenario. So let's compare this with other heating methods. So if we just show the rows, here we are. You can see oil is the cheapest, £600 for the whole year and there is no standing charge and why is that well that's because you own the oil tank but with lpg you don't you uh, the uh, supplier owns the oil tank and mains gas this is the standing charge 29 pence a day multiplied by 365 days a year so uh, that's the basic situation as it stands 56 pence per liter that's what I found as a reasonable quote right now on Money Saving Expert. Last year, I was paying 65 pence a litre. And then you can see that we're almost uh, looking at a 400 pound saving compared to what I used to have. Uh, 61 pence a litre is what I've seen on Money Saving Expert. So I'm not too sure if that's realistic for Aberdeenshire. Uh, I would be interested in getting some feedback on that one. And as for direct heating with electricity, I've included a cheaper price for electricity because no one with storage heaters will use them during the day. They will use the, their overnight tariff. I don't know what that overnight tariff is, but I've assumed 14 pence. So double the Octopus Go tariff, basically. Now, I also have to declare that over the winter time, I have been away for 40 days. Had I been at home, that would have amounted to an extra 10 kilowatt hours of heat pump consumption during that time. So my additional heat pump consumption would have amounted to approximately 400 kilowatt hours or an extra 100 pounds. So we're looking at an overall electricity consumption of about 700 pounds. And bearing in mind, it has been a fairly average winter. We have had two very cold periods but we've also had some fairly cold periods in between those uh, very cold periods in addition to some uh, mild days as well. But now the question is going to be when we add solar panels and a battery to the equation what happens to my electricity bill? Bear also in mind I still have an electric car to drive so all of that should add up to quite a large electricity bill shouldn't it? So here you can see my bill for the 7th of March 2024. My balance was £2,128. So what does my balance look like as of now? So the most recent balance we have is 6th of February 2025. 
2,264 pounds. So we are about 150 pounds up on the 7th of March last year. So what are the chances of me uh, losing 150 pounds over the next month when we get our bill uh, on the 7th of March 2025? I think it's pretty small. I think we will uh, drop a little bit, maybe about uh, 50 pounds, but all told, um, they owe me money. They owe me uh, 2,200 ish pounds and that is only going up. So this is where the magic of adding all these components up together happens. If I look at the heat pump on its own, it doesn't look particularly attractive compared to all the other heating methods. But when you start looking at investments which reduce the effective overall price of electricity that you have in your house, you've eliminated your diesel bill by getting an electric car, you've eliminated your propane bills by going with a heat pump, and you've eliminated your electricity bills by going with solar power and battery power. And the overall effect is that I've made £27,000 of consumption from 2010 to 2020 disappear. That's the magic of adding the heat pump to the rest of your system. And it's the magic of adding on the components together. You, you have to think about this in terms of the whole picture, not just individual components. But if you're going to start with your net zero journey in your own home, I would start with solar panels, honestly. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting. In my next videos, I want to talk a little bit more about my solar panels, some particular quirks, uh, which I have uh, observed over the course of the winter time. And uh, I'll like to thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you again very soon.